As always, at this part of the, the program, we're kind of winding down and finding out from a jurisprudential perspective some of the issues um, and talking points that aren't really covered within uh, our society. Yeah. So we want to kind of highlight very briefly um, some of the key issues that uh, young Muslims and Muslim families go through on a daily basis. Um, here to enlighten us one more time is Sayyid Ali and Nawab. Really appreciate your time. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu How are you, Sayyid? Everything okay? Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you for joining us. It's, it's our honor. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. So we were, um, today we were really looking at um, um, the unfortunate um, occurrence where parents separate, children are the innocent victims mm. in those relationships, and then the tug of war that pers yeah. I mean, it pursues. And living in a country where obviously Islamic law is not, um, you know, in, is not the predominant law here, um, we then fall into this trap of, you know, which law benefits us, which one we go down, the route that we take. So for instance, in separation of um, marriages, who gets the children, the custody of the children becomes yeah. a big issue. Um, so the countries in this side of the world take a favorable route towards the mothers. Mm. So we have lots of, you know, a justice for fathers. I've, I remember seeing um, for single fathers that don't get access. So yeah. really, in your experience, what are you seeing in the community? And really, what are the laws that are sort of, what are the laws for the mother and the father? Yeah, from an Islamic perspective. Uh, thank you for raising this uh, important issue which unfortunately uh, Muslim families and Muslim communities are being tested upon mm -hmm. day after day. There are examples that I've uh, been involved in or I hear about and I've seen from close uh, proximity that uh, for example a family consisting of a, of a father and a mother and, and two children uh, the mother uh, out of uh, a simple problem or simple issue makes it something major and gets the, uh, the local authorities involved. And being uh, in a family that lives in the West, uh, with the local authorities get involved, they tend to see what is the policy or how they deal with it uh, accordingly to the, to the law of the, mm. of the country. Mm. And uh, at times, uh, there needs to be a work done between two brackets, if I can say, uh, a very um, important work done by the Muslim community, yeah. by the uh, uh, Islamic centers and the local authorities to educate them that if such uh, situations do arise, the further investigation needs to be done, mm. uh, not only by the local authorities, but also by the local uh, Islamic center or by the yeah. local imams, but for them to uh, educate the local authorities of what is the best means or what is the best way to deal with these, these situations. Where the mother calls the local authorities and um, wrongfully, or falsely accuses the, the father mm -hmm. for committing s a certain act or, or neglecting, for example, the family uh, or not being the appropriate father to, to mm -hmm. her children and to her uh, and the husband to herself. So uh, they decide to uh, separate uh, the mother and the children mm -hmm. from the father and the father is not given access yeah. to, to see the children. And if that was to be that he is able to see the children, that is done after a lengthy process yeah. going yeah. to court yeah. and sp standing in front of the judge and, and uh, giving evidence mm. for tell something us, that never did actually happen. Yeah, tell us, say what, what are the actual laws surrounding a divorce? Um, as I'm not sure if it's important to understand who was in the wrong in a divorce, for example, but say there was a divorce and there was one child involved. Who gets who gets custody of the child, according to Islam? If there was a, a normal scenario would be parents getting divorced and there is a child, uh, until the age of two, the mother takes responsibility of the child. Mm. And uh, after two years, Islamically, it is the father that takes responsibility or has the responsibility to take uh, the child into his custody. Can he choose to give the responsibility to the mother? Yes, they can. They can uh, because some people, when they get married, they s stay in touch. Mm. Mm. They stay, let's say, for a while, for the, for the benefit of that of child, the child. Yeah. in contact with each other. Yeah. So in these situations, the, the husband and the wife are able to communicate, if mm. they are communicating, mm. to, to choose the best for their child, whether so to stay with the mother or to stay in with In what situation them. would the custody of the child be given to the mother solely, regardless of whether the husband chooses to give it to the mother or not? In, in a very, very um, 
minute situation and very rare situation where the father has neglected mm. oh. to the full to the full extent the the well-being of uh, of the his children he mm. does not take care of them he's just left them mm. So uh, that to, does to happen, live. that yeah. does happen and it's very difficult, I mean, I know in the opening statement you said that, you know, absolutely it's wrong where you falsely accuse somebody and, ha and you know, an, an innocent parent, whether whichever um, parent is, is then denied access to those children. But equally, there are scenarios where they're genuinely those cases yes. and then, you know, to then say that, okay, I, I, mean, I wasn't aware that you could actually negotiate who takes the children because it's such, you hear that after being you know, up to two and then post two and a lot of fathers Unfortunately, we'll say, well, they're, they're my children, they're my right. But it's almost like a battle between the parents, isn't yeah. it? It's yeah. not thinking about the well-being of those children. Well, Islam has put a ruling yeah. in, in, such, in certain situations or in certain circumstances where the parents are not able to reach a, a, a good yeah. agreement. decision, agreement between themselves, who takes the children to, into their custody. Islam has always given the, the custody for the children to the father after the age of two years. Can you get, shed some light as to the wisdom behind that? Because we feel like um, mothers can genuinely take care of children two, three, four, five, six years. I think up than, till adolescence. Yeah, but, but not better than our, men. So yeah. what's the wisdom behind? And the man, for example, has to go out to work. Where would he put the child? And if he doesn't, if he's in a country where he's not with his mother or father, or he's not has many family members, how does that work? Some of the some of the situations maybe, or the wisdom behind this decision by Islam, is that uh, in all cases the the husband is the breadwinner to the family, mm. and the husband takes the responsibility not only the children but the the wife and the house. So when he, Islam is given responsibility for the children after they are stopped or after the mother sto stops feeding them with milk and they are able to feed them, eat uh, normal food, uh, they are able, the father is able to um, take care of the children is because the father at, in, in certain s situations is very um, uh, s strong in terms of feeling and emotions. And he is able to take care of the kids in, in most difficult situations. Sometimes the mother shatters mm. down when mm. separation happens yeah. between the husband and the wife. Mm. And, and uh, she enters a state of confusion. Mm. So uh, there may be times where she is not able to take care mm. and go out and, and, and be the breadwinner okay. and take responsibility it's of... It's an emotional of, upheaval, of, isn't yeah. it? You're exactly. Right. But the father, um, he says, well, this is the situation and I have to live with it and yeah. I have to take responsibility. And they do. And the father, for the children, even if they have been divorced, if the husband and the wife have been divorced until the last moments yeah. of his life, he is responsible to child. take care and I mean, uh, support those children. Those scenarios where people are amicable for the sake of children, yeah. mature in their outlook is a blessing. And yeah. I think it's something that, you know, hopefully people take that avenue. But I think it's the cases and, and the mediation, which you've mentioned, that Islam has given the guidance if the mediation doesn't work. And that's a massive, you know, um, I think, statement that you try to work things out yourself. And if obviously the guidance is there, sorry, you want to. No, no, I was just going to say, um, following on from that point, mm. did you have, did you have no, a question? No, no, yes. Yeah, because this is the, 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 the point of confusion and the, the troubling point here is that Islam very clear the, mm. the, the, the right of the child is with the, with the father. In British society, the right of the child is with the mother in most, most circumstances. Yeah. And the, the mother can have the full force of the law behind her. And that's why she feels very confident when it comes to the child. No, the child is mine. She doesn't care about yeah, Islam this, at this point. This is unfortunate. I mean, mm. there are situations where the mother, when the, the Islamic law pleases her and is uh -huh. on her side, she yeah. says, I am a Muslim. Yeah. Or I want to do it Islamically. But when she says, no, it's not, then she says, no, I, I'd rather go the you know, society. Exactly. Mm. So here we should, Islam, when we come to become Muslims, Islam always says Islam is a full package. Yeah. You either take it all or you, don't take or you just don't it. practice yeah. Islam. Yeah. So here, w in good times you are a Muslim because it benefits you. Mm. But in bad times you say, um, no, I think I'll, I'll pick up the phone and call the local authority. So here both, the father and the mother. So what does the father do in this situation then? Well, again, the mediation. And the fact that he has to um, um, be patient until this is—I mean, if he chooses to live with, to live in the same society, I mean, there's only little thing he can do. I, mean, I think the, the sad fact is that 
women who do know their rights and say that I will threaten to take those children away if you know and divorce don't realize that perhaps tomorrow she may want to get married the father may get married step families are not easy to maneuver and navigate and you know it's at that time I'm going to hurt you the maximum I can hurt you but you know at the end there are these two little human beings three little human beings however many children you have that need nurturing and in that situation that your relationship has broken down you need to do what's right for those children and that's just fair and just whichever society you want to live in you know whether you I mean obviously I think where we go for the Western society they're saying that even a lot of children are taken into care homes unjustly because of the authorities go through a law, practice of law um, and tick boxing. Um, so the breakdown of the family is, is, un is, is sadly inevitable there. But in terms of an Islamic perspective, I think it's important. Do you think, as from your perspective, that there's more that we can be doing to help people to do the right thing, even though it's difficult? Of course, it always comes down to the family to educate uh, Islamically with the Islamic laws about the, the laws affecting the family and associated with the family. Um, the father, the mother, once they want to mm. uh, get their children ma uh, married, not only they advise them about the, the married life, but also they have to make them aware mm. of certain situations arise. You will have to always come back to the Islamic teachings yeah. before you actually think of getting help from there, yeah. from outside the house and uh, calling the local authorities. That's one thing. The second thing, the, the local communities and the local centers, the Islamic centers, they need to do their bit as well. Organize programs, organize events, get someone specialized in, in, in family issues and family uh, affairs to sit down and, and speak and advise them about the, the negative consequences if someone chooses yeah. to go through that, down that route. Because they will say they will, the local authorities will, uh, won't take them into their own custody. They will give them to the custody of care homes yeah. or they will give them to yeah. other families who may be outside yeah. Islam, who may be not practicing individuals. Or they don't have, you know... Um, uh, the same morals, and, anything. And, and same morals, same akhlaq, same, same uh, teaching, same living. Yeah. So, that will be so um, negative on the child's uh, uh, upbringing mm -hmm. and behavior. Why? Because the, the child is being brought up that, okay, this is good, this is not good, this is yeah. halal, this is haram. And you take them and you throw them into another uh, house mm -hmm. where they don't actually practice these kind of things. They will, they will become confused. And this will, if, if they are confused from a young age, then that will definitely affect them when they, when they are older. So one, one advice yes. I want to give to, uh, to myself and to um, all parents is that once you think of getting divorced, there is no other uh, avenue you can take mm -hmm. but divorce. Think about the consequences of those children. Mm. Definitely. Because you may, the father may be able to go and get married, establish yeah. another home for himself yeah. or another house. Uh, the mother may be able to say, okay, I'm not going to get married, but I'm just going to live mm. my life. Or get married, bring another man into my life. Yeah. Uh, which brings me to the next um, point, which is once the mother is divorced and she finishes the idda, and she gets married to another man, automatically, Islamically, the custody falls upon the, the, the father. Mm. She has no right to mm. take the Even custody. Even within the first two years? Of, of, of Even within the first two years. Mm. So she can't get married anywhere else? Yes. The first two years. So uh, if she well, was no, to, she would, but she could. She would get be able to get married. No, I'm saying if but she the wants to take care of the children, if she, oh, yeah. she wants yeah. to yeah. the custody, the life, yeah. Yeah. and the custody of the children uh, is uh, Islamically, they leave it until the 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 son gets to the age of 15, and the daughter gets to some uh, to some opinion seven, and to some nine. Mm. Once they reach that age, they are able to make their own decisions. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, right. Whether they like to stay with the father or whether they want to move to live with the mother. Okay. That's Islamically. Then um, socially, they have to decide whether which one is better for them. Is the mother able to look after these children financially, emotionally, socially? Um, but I think in, in English law, I don't know about other Western countries, but they look at the maturity of the child. So the child is... Um, say t 9, 10, and I don't know what the ages are now, um, they will take into account where the child wants to live. And then if it says the father, that gives waiting to the other parent, if it's the father or the mother who's the absent. Um, but they do, and it's actually quite similar. I don't think it's that different from how Islam is. Exactly. Yeah. It, 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 they always take the maturity of the children yeah, into consideration. Which is a good thing. Because there are some of the children, they, they, they're not even in this world. They can't make their own decisions. So yeah. they see what is the best, what is fitting 
for the welfare of that child. They, they make that decision then. I mean, I, I would love to ask you more, and we've run out of time, mm. but it's even the concept of, you know, um, how people in this society now, you know, and it's world over, it's not in this particular one we live in, but the thing that, well, it's my life, and I've got a right to enjoy it, I don't care about these children, and what we're not looking at is the implications of the future generations, are we? Of that course, I mean, they, these children have been, you know, the family have been blessed yeah. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given them. There are there are some families that don't even yeah. have the opportunity no. to uh, have children Actually. in their life. But those who are blessed and Allah has given them these beautiful roses uh, that uh, open up in their yeah. life, they should be careful because yeah. uh, at the end of the day, these are uh, aman. Yeah, these are absolutely. what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us to look after, and that yeah. we have to bring, give back these amana yeah. in the best of ways and the best of shapes. Not to throw our blessings away, but equally, yeah, if you go down the path of divorce, keep it amicable and mature. And yeah, you know. if there is a problem, you solve it between yourselves, or keep it outside the the boundaries yeah. of the children. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, again, taught me. You. And me, yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so, so much. Um, Inshallah, keep us in your du'as and have a blessed Friday. Yeah, hopefully we, uh, there's more to come from the Sayyid and of course more yeah. to come from Morning Barakah as well. So from myself and Zara, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.